working on a large Stuart model steam plant part 7, setting the valve timing of the Stuart twin Victoria steam engine. And it would seem that no matter how many times I describe how to set valve timing on steam engines, I still receive many questions from viewers asking me how to do it. So in this one, I'm going to show how to do it very slowly and methodically. The first thing to do is to check inside the steam chests that the valves travel an equal amount over the ports. And this part of the timing setup was done when I had a look at the engine as I built it into the plant. I'm using some thick walled silicone rubber tubing that I buy off eBay and I'm holding it in place using cable ties. Now it's time to open the steam valve. And nothing happens, so I need to give it a push. Ah, that's more like it. Right, the engine's running, and it seems to be running quite well. But by the sound of the exhaust beats and the fact that I had to give it a push, something is not right. The eccentric at this side of the engine is very tight on the shaft. So I'll start on the other side because that's not quite so tight. As usual, I'm setting the highest point of the eccentric at 90 degrees to the crank web to start with. The idea is to admit the air or the steam just before the piston reaches top dead center. No formulas here, I do this by feel. The engine is knocking because that's not the case at the moment. The compressed air is being admitted late after the piston's passed top dead center. To move the position of the other eccentric, I have to tap it very gently with a hammer. The point that I'm tapping is the root of the grub screw and not the eccentric sheave itself. So now I'm going to adjust both sides so that they run in perfect harmony with each other. But at the moment I'm doing this very ham-fistedly for the tutorial. If you listen to the exhaust beats, it's skipping and it's nowhere near even. Also, the engine's still knocking because both sides of the valve timing are retarded. One more time with the screwdriver, slacken off the grub screw, place the screwdriver in a different position and tap it with the small hammer then re-tighten the grub screw. And as you can now hear, it's running better. But the beats are still uneven, it's not knocking as much. But it is slightly better. The valve setting on this engine is complicated by the fact that there is a very slight tight spot on it, because it hasn't done a lot of running. I'm using my ball of string with the tube to amplify the exhaust beat, as I described in the last episode, with the pump. Very scientific, here it is sat on its brass or tin, just in the right position, to cause turbulence. And the beats are still uneven. I suppose some people would be quite happy to leave it at this, but unfortunately I'm not that kind of person. I like things to be right. What I'm doing at the moment is just checking the valve levers to make sure that they're not floating about on the spindles, which frequently happens. But thankfully in this case, the valve levers are both very solid, so it's all down to timing. This time I'm going to set the timing on the left hand eccentric and get it as near correct as possible. Once I tapped it round a very small amount with the hammer, I then tightened the grub screw once again. When you get to this stage, what you have to do is put some low pressure into the engine, grab the flywheel, then you can see the point at which the air is admitted to the cylinder. The compressed air or steam needs to enter the cylinder alternately at both ends of the stroke in exactly the same place. To illustrate this, I'm moving the eccentric a fair way. Now the high point of the eccentric is just past 90 degrees to the crank web. And now the sound appears to be more even. By putting some pressure on the flywheel to simulate a load, you can really hear the exhaust beats. It's most important to make sure that no parts of the engine are sticking, so I'm giving it plenty of oil. This is just one of many oilings. I have to say at this point, you need a lot of patience to get this right. At any time you can say, well that's near enough, but that's entirely up to you. This is a really high grade steam plant and I want everything on it to be perfect, or as perfect as possible. Setting the valve timing on a twin cylinder engine like this one is very similar to setting the valve timing on a miniature locomotive with two cylinders. And we all know what a steam locomotive sounds like when it's running, well this engine should sound exactly the same. It has two double acting cylinders and four potential beats per revolution. And now it's starting to sound a little bit like a locomotive. This, by the way, is not recommended. Do not do this when the engine's running. It's not something that you want to do at all. These engines can bite very badly. I'm just feeling for side play in the rod. Another tiny adjustment to the eccentric, I think. And open the air valve once again. What is it sounding like? Well, not bad. Possibly not quite as good as it did a moment ago. I think that the left hand eccentric is now set to where it's going to be and thankfully 
the right hand eccentric is easier to work with because I can rotate it without using a hammer. I'm advancing this side to make sure that the air is admitted just before the piston goes over top dead centre. And as I've mentioned earlier, this needs to happen at both ends of the stroke. It's known as early admission and it needs to be equal early admission at each end. Now as you can hear it's very close, but it's not quite close enough. Whenever you grip the flywheel to check the valve timing, make sure that you've decreased the amount of air going into the engine. Because if any part of the flywheel grabs your fingers, I don't think the flywheel is going to be the thing that gets broken. This is the final adjustment, because it really is so close now, it's just about the same on both sides. Well, except for the fact that on one side it's perfect, and on the other side it's slightly retarded. Before I finalise this job, I'm going to clean up the engine a bit, because the cat hairs have been driving me mad. This steam plant is quite a complicated thing. With a lot of nooks and crannies to keep clean, it would be a good idea, I think, to put it in a glass case. But for the moment, I've drowned it in WD-40, used a paintbrush and a cloth, and now I'm using an airline to blow away the last residue. There's something about this engine that I never did like, and that's these oilers on the crosshead guides. They look and work fine on the main bearings, but they're so ridiculously out of scale on the crossheads. I only fitted them in the first place because the customer for whom I built this plant wanted me to do so, but now I'm returning them to the smaller brass type. And in this clip I can still see some cat hairs, can you believe it after all that? So I will be giving it a second clean, but I won't video that. The very last part of this job is to put the valves in exactly the right place in the steam chest relative to the ports. I can hear that at one end of the left hand cylinder the valve is in the wrong place, only very very slightly, and also the same thing in the right hand cylinder, but in the opposite direction. What I have to do is remove the valve linkage first on one and then on the other, and as the valve spindles are threaded into the driving block of the valve, I just rotate the valve spindles the required amount. In this clip, if you watch the crank web, you will see that air is admitted just before the crank web rolls over, and exactly the same amount at each end. All it needs now is the minutest adjustment to the position of the eccentric, and that should be OK. As I rotate the flywheel, it feels springy at each end. And it's this springiness which is the early admission which cushions the motion of all the parts and stops the engine from knocking. Being very picky, I'm now removing the valve linkage once again to rotate the valve spindle one more turn. But only on this side because the other side's fine. The engine is running much better now, apart from the very slight tight spot. This is about as even as I can get it. What I'm going to do for the rest of the video is just let the engine run. So that's it for this episode, but before I do that, there are just one or two more tweaks required. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.